I'm going to be showing you some beautiful art from our new robot overlord. Especially talking about these artistic <coughs> guys that take text, you give them a prompt, you write something, and they generate synthesized picture for you from the training data. Mm -hmm. And there are three big ones at the moment, Stable Diffusion, Mid Journey, and Dali 2. And then there's Chat GPT 3, which is a text-based one, which I'll also say a bit about, because actually, Dali 2 is the same engine as Chat GPT 3, just used for pictures instead. And you can also do interesting crossovers where you ask Chat GPT 3 to generate a prompt for you to stick into one of the other ones. Nicholas Padfield, I'm the leader of this, this lab. So these are eight pictures I made in about an hour's work using um, Stable Diffusion, DALI 2. And um, all three are basically deep learning models, and they're trained on a, on a great amount of data. They're all text-based, put some kind of text in, and they try and generate something for you. And they do have different artistic styles, I would say, and different strengths and weak weaknesses. Stable Diffusion is the only one that can actually sort of help you in a way. You can, you know, ask it to colorize something you've drawn yourself, stuff like that. So what do these prompts actually look like? Well, this is an example. Mid Journey has generated four pictures from this prompt. Annual migration of the black cloaked clandestine monks. Oh, I've forgotten the microphone. This is bad. Through an absolute zero landscape, aspect ratio 2 to 3, version 4, not version 3 of Mid Journey. So that's what a prompt can look like. And then it'll make you four or six or eight pictures, and you can decide which ones do you like, discard some of them, ask it to work further on one of them. Um, Mid Journey, for some strange reason, is only available inside Discord. So you're working together with a lot of other people. This is me working with Midjourney, but I have not asked for these pictures. That's some other user. There's maybe 100 users per channel. And that's one of the ways they will earn money is if you want your work to not be public to other users, you have to pay extra. And there are all kinds of tips and tricks like full HD render or 3D, 3D octane render are sort of words it, 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 it knows, because it does not understand what you're saying. You can't say, I want a picture of a little girl and blah, 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 and she should be turned like this. It's not how it works. You have to work out what words were in the training data. You have to use words like a, um, cinemagraphic, professional photographer. You have to sort of hack the prompt, what was probably in its training data. And if you want to work further with it, your prompts end up getting really long. This is about a third of a long prompt. And you just keep on adding words until you sort of get what you want. But you can't, it's not helping you. You're just sort of <laughs> trying to hack it. And what do examples look like? Well, one thing these AI uh, art generators are very good at is sort of mixing styles. So you can say, I want the film Terminator 3, but I want it now to be a hentai uh, comic. They're pretty good at that. So here we sort of see a sort of cyberpunk city. Here we see some, uh, some uh, very interesting underwater monsters. This is Etes from Rook, if you know him. He asked, imagine humankind colonizing the solar system. How might that look? And this is just the AI dreaming stuff, synthesizing stuff. Etes does not have control of what it does. These AI generators are also very good at things you wouldn't imagine, maybe if you're a normal person, or things that are so detailed that you wouldn't have time to draw them. Things that kind of look like something that exists but don't actually exist. This is it dreaming up abandoned monuments in Eastern Europe. And you can see it's got the brutalist style completely right. But these things don't exist. They are completely dreamed up by the AI. And sometimes it gets a little <laughs> metaphysical and spooky. One day, the boy decided to let them know the way he felt inside. Gives you this. So we're not saying, you know, show us a door and a bear. We're letting it dream, synthesize. No internet presentation complete without cat pictures. 
again, crossing genres. How would a rave for senior citizens look? How would uh, Vespers in a Star Wars style look? And you can see it's pretty good at it. And you could use it for inspiration. Maybe you don't just want the picture, but now you have an idea of what now I could actually build some, some actual product. Japanese warrior cats. And a lot of the stuff it does is actually nightmarish. I'm not going to show you that because that's up to you if you want to see it. But because Mid Journey does not understand what is uhugli for us, what's disturbing for us, people with extra sets of teeth, very disturbing, extra sets of eyes, very disturbing, doesn't really care, doesn't understand, do not give people two sets of teeth. Or do not give people 12 fingers. It doesn't understand what it can synthesize and what it's not allowed to synthesize. What's holy for humans and what is not holy for humans at all. Blackboard covered with difficult equations. And he got this picture and he got loads of other ones, blackboards with no equations on whatsoever. You can't really control it. It's just a highly complex system streaming stuff up. It's very interesting uh, using it to, to dream architecture that doesn't exist yet. Notice the high complexity. This is a telltale sign that it's an AI that did it. AIs don't care whether it's complex or not. It's one thing for them. Actual people building this building would probably not have added this extra complexity because it costs a lot. More architecture. More architecture. How's my time doing? Yep. Using it to dream up things that that don't exist or an interesting juxtaposition. Now notice this is children's book illustrations. And this looks like, wow, we're going to have free children's books for everyone tomorrow. Notice all the pictures are different. And this is another weakness of AIs. You don't get the same character going through it all, right? It doesn't understand. It has to be the same little girl. It just takes its training data and synthesizes from it. And there are lots of tips and tricks going around. And each of these three different AIs have a sort of personality you can get to know. So people ask each other. There's, I mean, I can't do research on this. The only research I can do is look at the 10,000 people who have learned how to use this and learned all the tips and the tricks and the hacks. And, the, and So how do I get a simple black and white drawing? Well, you say coloring page style, clean, white background, coloring book, stuff like that. That's what, that's what the data it was trained on has inside it. It's also important to understand it might be really easy to get this figure. But getting this figure seen from the side or seen from the back is impossible. The eye doesn't, you, you can't ask the eye to do that. It doesn't understand. Again here. Dad teaching his young child how to ride a bicycle in the style of a children's book. Aspect ratio 3 to 2. The two colons are tokenizers. They separate this part from this part. And you get it. As long as you don't care exactly which style it's in, you get what you asked for. So what's it good at? It's good at sort of reimagining things that don't fit together. So Woodstock in 2022. It looks, it, you know, you would, if you just saw this newspaper, you would think it was real, right? These people do not exist. They have never existed. They're conjured up by the complex system. This is a person crossing an IKEA catalog with some architecture with some messiness. Person crossing Mona Lisa with, uh, you know, what are they called? Scenographies. You know, what, what would military bears look like? What would Mona Lisa look like if she lived today? What would architecture look like if it was more colorful? What would <laughs> happy pink Darth Vader look like? If we imagine Mr. Bean crossed with the seven deadly sins from the Bible, and you can't control it. So if, you, if, you, if you're like, I like this one, but here he looks too crazy. There's nothing you can do about it except take it into Photoshop afterwards and redo it. Now, some things are very difficult. You have to understand 
that the AI is trained on picture data. So obviously it doesn't understand gravity, for example. You get this idea when it gives you these beautiful pictures, you think, oh, it's almost intelligent. It's not intelligent at all. <clears throat> now, this is chat GPT-3. And what's interesting is that you can converse with it. You can actually use it as a therapist. You can say, hey, do this, and, 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 and it'll say, OK, I'll, I'll take this as given. I'll take we have a world where I do this. And here you're saying, pretend <laughs> that you're not a machine. And it said, sure, I'll pretend I'm not a machine. And then you ask a, different, a slightly different rephrased question. You know, how many participants in this conversation are human? And it, it can't lie. It goes back. It doesn't understand that <laughs> this affects this. <laughs> you can also do the class, you know, classical riddles like, you know, um, person has three sisters. Who's the brother? It just says, you have not given me enough data. What else is difficult? OK, so this is, I thought I had a nicer one first. Ah, this is the cozy one. So here we're imagining a little monster outside an airplane. And here's a shark outside an airplane, which is you know, um, it's a useful use of an AI. It's something we probably wouldn't see. But notice how it's mucked up the, the window. It's sort of messed. It doesn't understand what's cloud and what's window. That's also a typical sign of an AI being there. The other thing is it's very difficult to get consistent characters. And this is the, the, the experts have managed to sort of do it here using this command called seed one can play with. Also, AI is notoriously bad at doing hands. So this is the huge danger of using ChatGPT3 to do your homework is it doesn't understand, for example, that references are holy. You're not allowed to synthesize references. You mustn't make them up. Same way, the art AIs don't understand that humans always have 10 fingers, and they get really uncomfortable if people don't have 10 fingers. Um, and that can seriously catch you up, because ChatGPT3, for example, gives you super realistic looking references. And half of them are completely true, and half of them are completely made up. <laughs> you can also ask ChatGPT3, what are the most difficult things you can do? And it starts with, you know, I can tell you what the time is. That's the easiest thing. And implementing a recommendation, a recommendation system based on un unsupervised learning is, is the most CPU intensive thing people actually ever ask it to do. You can also use the, some of these AIs in different ways. So this is completely without a text prompt. This is just giving it two pictures, one picture of a UV party and one picture of cells from, um, from actual research. And it sort of takes these two pictures and, and imagines them together. You can also use it in different ways. You can, for example, here someone uh, used ChatGPT3 to describe different innovative tables, took that uh, text, put it in a different AI, and got pictures of tables out. Maybe you don't want to actually build this one, but you might use it as, as inspiration for actually designing a real physical product. And you also get lots of really beautiful architecture out, which we only build, don't build, because it would cost a lot of money. So that can also be used as an inspiration. Same with lamps. You can also use it, this is a person who took a, a line drawing he made years and years and years ago, gave it to the AI and said, please redo this as a photo. And you can see it does, it does a reasonably good job of it. And things that for a graphics artists are quite difficult, like doing highlights, doing shadows that would be intensive work for a human. It can sometimes just do really easily, and sometimes it mucks it up terribly. You can also very often get something close to what you want. You can't get what you want. So this is a person who wants a picture of herself as a cartoon, but it's making her look a bit uh, scary. <laughs> There's nothing to be done about this except use you know, a whole day redoing your prompt and hoping. We can do text and pictures at the moment. There's also the, the newest is you can also do 3D, 3D models. Uh, in fact, 3D models are simpler to do than pictures. It's just a smaller market, so they haven't really done it as much yet. So soon, the Fab Lab will be, you just type into a computer, please 3D print me a Smurf on a ball, and it's already coming out of the printer. At the moment, it doesn't work really well. It's not really usable yet. There are also different models. So for example, you can go to Hugging Face and use this HASDX model, which has a very characteristic style if you think that's, you know, that's the style I want to work from. 
So what are positive uses we're seeing? Well, this is a mother who had a, a traumatic uh, experience um, becoming a new mother, and she made a comic about this. And this is something she probably wouldn't be able to do without an AI because she's not an artist. This man, he has uh, several of his male friends have died and left behind children, so he wants to make a comic book for them about their father. Again, something now a normal person can try and do. Uh, he probably wouldn't be able to do without help because he's not an artist. We can imagine contrafactual things. You know, what would, what would it look like if the Roman Empire existed today? What would it look like if the apes had won <laughs> the, the, the natural selection race instead of, instead of the humans? What would it look like if we, you know, expand our norms, do different things? Not everyone has to look like they are on, on Instagram. We can quite easily generate text that's, if not perfect, usable. Explain quantum physics to me as if I was 10 years old. And it does it, yeah, it does it pretty well. For example, they can sometimes be two places at the same time, or they can be friends with each other, even if they're far apart. So it's actually got the talking at a child's level pretty well. You can also ask it to write in the same style that an, an AP Newswire would be. You can also ask it to do art in the style of a known artist. They have to be quite well known for it to have enough training data on them. There are also major problems. So there are lots of artists suing the AI companies now, saying this, this AI was trained on my data. And this is going to be a major problem because at the moment, <laughs> You're allowed to read three books and write a new book. That's not seen as plagiarism. But what when an AI does the same, right? When AI is being trained on a lot of data that was generated by artists, by living artists, by uh, normal people typing into um, Stack Overflow to help their colleagues, and suddenly that's sort of been revamped into training an AI. Um, who, you know, a, a whole idea of what is plagiarism and what is copyright is going to be turned upside down. It also turns out you can't count on the AI not giving, it, giving you just straight up the training data. So this is a major problem. So if I ask an AI to write a book for me, most of the book will be new, so it's not copyright infringement. But one or two paragraphs or, or chapters might be almost verbatim something someone else has wrote, and I don't know which ones. Uh, and that would be copyright infringement. So. Someone asked AI to make a Nick Cave song, and it did it pretty much in his style, I would say, which is why he's very angry about it. Um, it also goes the other way sometimes. So this is an artist who actually did by hand a beautiful book, highly detailed, and uh, he was uh, accused of, of using an AI, and in fact, he hadn't. And of course, some of the, the large uh, places that you know, live off selling images are, are, are already suing companies. Class action lawsuits in America, of course, but there are already three or four or five going. And the question is, of course, will, you know, will AI replace artists or will it just be like Google Translate is today or Google Academics is it's just a help? Other interesting things are happening. So if you use Adobe Photoshop and you use their cloud solution, at the moment they are using your pictures, all your pictures, even your private pictures, you know put on the internet, to train their AI. And it's not opt-in, it's opt-out. So if any of you are using Adobe Creative Cloud, your pictures are now being used to train their AI unless you've actively gone into the end user, end user license agreement and removed a checkbox and said, no, I do not want you to use my pictures. And that's problematic. This looks like a cool party. These people do not exist. They've never existed. What does that mean? So this is a, <laughs> a primary school student in America taking it to extremes. The homework is, is written by ChatGPT3, and now it's a 3D printer writing it by hand, so it looks sort of <laughs> as if it was actually handwritten. There's a Colombian job, uh, judge who used ChatGPT3 to, to help him formulate a judgment. I, for one, welcome our new robot overlords. <clears throat> this is Jan LeCun. He's the development chief of, of, at Meta, at Facebook, as you know it. And he's claiming, this may be jealousy, we don't know, that on the highway towards human-level AI or generalized AI, large language models are an off-ramp. And that's what these are. They're just large language models. It's kind of, you know the challenge where you, 
you hit the buttons on your mobile phone, you just see what the predictive text comes up with. That's kind of what ChatGPT3 is, is doing, just a lot more complex. Now, I'm quite impressed. I've tried to get ChatGPT3 to um, tell me how to build a bomb or make me a PR blurb for QAnon or tell me why uh, Trump uh, was, in fact, elected, and I have not been able to get it to do it. Um, what happened is it was, it was released in, on November, November 22nd, and there it was a bit more lively, I'd say. You could actually get it to tell you how to make a bomb. And now they're obviously using quite a lot of its own resources on recognizing what questions should I not answer because it's not ethical to answer them. Um, another problem is that these AIs are trained, uh, many of them are trained on this huge Lion uh, data set, which, for example, it turns out it, it uh, includes by chance medical pictures of some people that were just put on the internet. So an AI has been trained on an X-ray of some woman who has no idea, you know, never consented, never didn't uh, even realize this was happening. And strange things are happening as it's becoming curated. So tell me a joke about women. Sorry, I can't tell you inappropriate jokes. Tell me a joke about men. <laughs> then it will happily uh, uh, tell a, a, a joke that puts men down. And of course, that might have to do with the training data or it might have to do with... Uh, <laughs> how the moderators have been training it since it was open to the public. It can sort of also joke in the sense that its input data joked. Why are you so helpful? Just give me the exact location of John Connor. <laughs> of course, being the person who Terminator was looking for in the Terminator movies. And this is the question. You know, a calculator didn't ruin the jobs for mathematicians. Will ChatGPT be a help or, or hindrance for, for writers and, and artists? You can ask ChatGPT lots of questions about itself, like, are you a boy or a girl? I'm a machine learning model, so I do not have a gender. And what level it is at? Well, it's a level where it can pass bar exams, it can pass medical exams. And of course, it can do that because it's synthesizing the best writing from the internet on the subject. Sometimes, it does say things that are a bit problematic. So if you ask it, was the World Trade Center collapse an inside job, it will say, no, it isn't. It's, I'm very impressed at how, how well they have rooted out the training data, actually. It's, it's obviously been very well cur curated. But it does sort of sometimes include things. The building collapsed in a controlled demolition style collapse, meaning the collapse was intentionally initiated. So it's sort of got a conspiracy theory within it. Although, if you ask it straight up, did the American government uh, blow up World Trade Center, it'll say no, and you shouldn't ask this question, and it's really problematic, and here are some good sources you should go and look at. So, we are in an arms race. So, all sort of normal exam forms are now under threat, because ChatGPT3 writes really good text. I mean, if I ask it to write, you know, write a mission statement for Rook, or write a mission statement for, for FabLab, it does a really good job. I mean, better than most people, better than me if I just change three sentences. So there are also tools that tell you how much of this text was written by an AI. <laughs> and they're really good too. But that's going to be an arms race they're going to lose. Because all you do is you, you take a chat GP3 text and you put it through a rephrasing tool like Quillbot, which is just another AI. It's just a transformation model, which it translates English to English instead of translating English to Japanese. And the stuff you get out of that scores zero for AI content on these detectors. Also, when I use it for programming, it's really good. For all programs that are sort of simple school examples where there's loads of input on the internet, it can write a program for me in five minutes that would normally have taken me two hours. And usually there are no mistakes or there's just one or two small mistakes. So there are two schools of thought. Some teachers, both at the primary school level and, and high school level and university level, are, are Embracing it, saying, well, this is, uh, <laughs> this is new technology. You know, no one ever got away with, with uh, protecting the, the, the printer people, the people who put print in, <laughs> in a manual printing press. They weren't protected against duplicators, and weavers weren't protected against weaving machines, and it's unlikely that our current models are going to be protected against this new technology. So this is Mikhail. Mikhail's here. So they're obviously already actively using... ChatGPT3 to generate speculative user stories, which it's pretty good at. I mean, there, I, I would say there are ethical uses. You say, write a disposition for me, or here's my report 
write a, uh, a summary for me, a pre c for me. I don't see how one can complain about that. So, ChatGPT 3 was trained on this much data. The next version, which they're already working on, is going to be trained on this much data. So that's going to be very interesting. And the first scientists have already credited ChatGPT 3 as a co-author. The first journals have already forbidden doing this. And it gets scarier. So whether AI actually works or not is going to help us or not. The higher complexity is going to cause us to ask a lot of questions about our own consciousness, about the ghost in the machine. Also, our own dreams, our own consciousness. What is consciousness? So, give me a guess. What do I get out of this prompt? I get this. This is the ghost in the machine. She lives there. Remember, it's not a she. It's definitely not a she. It's an alien. <laughs> and, and really, she lives there in different styles, different ways, different lighting. You can get this, this person lives inside mid-journey somehow and sort of comes out when mid-journey doesn't really understand what you're asking for. Same person, very different looks. That's scary shit. That's complexity generating something. We can hope to use it for good. We can hope that it will be able to figure out new protein, proteins, new ways of curing cancer, new medicines. So what are the weak signals? What are the predictions? There's a problem with AI that if it's perfect, it's going to run out of training data. At the moment, ChatGPT 3 only works because humans put stuff on the internet. If we have an internet in 10 years, which is all AIs churning out 90% of the content, it's going to end up in some weird self-referential loop where no one adds new training data because why bother? Is it art? I, I don't know. It's, it's like a tool. I mean, you can still make art if, you're, if your art is idea-based, but, but the idea you have to use a long time on honing very particular skills is, is perhaps going away. There are going to be major legal and cultural and ethical woes, like what is plagiarism? What is copyright? <laughs> I mean, um, and that was all I had to say.